Hello, I am the Irish guy and lads. A year ago, I sat down and did one bold prediction for every Premier League club in 2023. Yeah, and it's 12 months later, and I'm scared to look at this video. Because this wasn't a video of normal, obvious predictions. Oh no, not like, oh, I think Helen will score a hat trick, that Eddie Howe will get a haircut, and Steve Cooper will terrify children when they knock at his door at Halloween. No, 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 these were outlandish, bold predictions. Oh, so I'm just scared I'm gonna get a big fat zero out of 20. Then I really will look about as clever as a stupid Viking who eats his own chest hair in a sandwich. Right, let's go. Arsenal will win the European Super Cup. They are Champions League material, so they just have to win the Europa League. If they don't, at the very least, reach the final, I'll do an entire video with melted ice cream in my hair, and he'll win the European Super Cup too, against, I don't know, Bayern Munich or PSG. Nope! Well, this is off to a great start. Not only did I say that Arsenal would win the Europa League, but that they would lift the Super Cup too. I was getting a little ahead of myself. I mean, who won the Europa League? Um, Sevilla, of course. I mean, they pretty much owned the tournament. Arsenal crashed out of Sporting Lisbon. After Aaron Ramsdale conceded a goal from the halfway line, Miguel Arteta probably made up his mind that night, went home and wrote in his diary about how he couldn't trust Ramsdale anymore. You know, a bit like that hormonal teenage girl now who doesn't trust her boyfriend when she sees him on a date with her cousin, just watching one of the awful sequels to Twilight. But yeah, the Super Cup final was between Man City and Sevilla. No Arsenal in sight. That is annoying. Imagine if they had won the Europa League. Then the Community Shield and the Super Cup would have been the exact same fixture, just 10 days apart. Spooky. Oh, and uh, oh, yeah, the um, almost forgot <sighs> the ice cream. Aston Villa will sack Unai Emery. What? Don't look at me like that. Emery and the Premier League are just not a good fit. He hasn't even had the new manager bounce, and he's wanting to sign Joe Felix, but would instead wind up with Timu Puki for 8 million quid. The results will fall off a cliff, and when Villa are rotting 16th in the league by Halloween, you're damn right that an expensive Emery is going to be stuffed in a cheap taxi that sticks of cheese and replaced with, I don't know, Bruno Lage? Do you feel like you've just lost brain cells listening to that? Because I do. Listening back to me waffling like a hyperactive bunny rabbit from 12 months ago, I do just sound like one of those raving lunatics who like to roam around town spreading the word of the monster Easter bunny. You know, some huge mutant rabbit who's just going to crash land in a spaceship and start feasting on anyone who refuses to brush their teeth. Lads, I said that Emery would be out the door. Sacked. That this whole Villa project would not work. That he was destined to be branded as just a Premier League failure. I said I thought Bruno Lage would be in charge of Villa now. Ending the year in a relegation battle. Yeah, he seems to be sacked by but a in Brazil, while Emery has guided Villa to a record 15 Premier League home wins in a row. They're literally just two points off first, and I thought he would be sacked. And would now just be what? Spending Christmas begging Gattafi for a job? I think I need to give my mother a call. And just make perfectly sure that when I was born, the doctor didn't accidentally spill lasagna on my brain. Oh, thank goodness. Thank you for that pick, Irish guy. Now I know that Unai Emery is going to take us back into the top five. Yeah. Bournemouth will go 10 games without a win. I know Gary O'Neill has started well as Bournemouth coach, but I'm sorry. We are about to see all of that fall off a cliff in 2023. 10 games, no wins. I mean, this doesn't even feel that bold. Is it not obvious? Lads, right now I am the biggest advocate of Andoni Iriola. To such a point where I wouldn't even be devastated to get his face tattooed on my nose. I think the Cherries are in a brilliantly positive place. But a year ago, when they had that uninspiring bang average mouse off the street Gary O'Neill in charge. Someone with all the gravitas of a blind chipmunk. Yeah, I thought it was very feasible they go 10 games without a win. I was right. I was absolutely 100% correct. Lads, Iriola had to wait nine league games to get his first Bournemouth win. Back to the fact that O'Neill lost his last four matches in charge. And, uh, lads, I'm not a genius mathematician or anything. In fact, my school teachers would probably have told my mum that she should have sold me on the dark web when I was four. But lads, that is a 13-game winless run in the Premier League. How ironic. I've been picking up Iriola all season long, but unbeknownst to me, the longer he actually failed to win a match, the better for my prediction. Thank you, Iriola. Even when you fail, I win. Oh, so I've got this one right. Get in! Oh, let's go. What's next? Brentford will be bottom at Christmas. And this form won't last forever. And yeah, after a summer, Thomas Frank will be forced to sell Ivan Tony. And having to replace him with just some awkward beanbag on the cheap, like, I don't know. Hotaloo? Complacency will absolutely turn this Brentford squad into weak toast. Yeah, I'm guessing a panicky board will sack Frank in mid-November, and Brentford will be absolutely bottom of the league by Christmas, with someone left feel like David Wagner at the wheel. Oh, uh, 
what a mess that was. Where do you want to start with this absolute car crash? So I suggested that Brentford be bought him at Christmas. Because they'd sell Ivan Tony and replace him with Hozaloo. I was speaking about Hozaloo. As if the mere sight of him in a Brentford shirt would be embarrassing. Um, the reality is that nowadays, most Brentford fans would probably beg this man for a selfie. Because, um, he's instead scoring goals up front for Real Madrid. I said Thomas Frank would be binned off and replaced with David Wagner. Someone who instead is surely on the brink of the sack at Norwich. Oh, what a mess this prediction was. I don't think any Premier League club will ever hire this creepy club clone again. There's more chance of them getting this Wagner at the wheel. Oh, I don't get the feeling he stinks of cologne and pooey underpants. <laughs> Honestly, David Wagner. Klopp's best man at his wedding, who's chosen to dress up like him ever since. Oh, why don't I get the feeling that in 10 years' time, he's gonna be writing love letters to Klopp whilst Dido's singing in the boot of his car. Brighton, Danny Lodak will score a hat trick. Well, then, he's only ever scored one treble in his life against Galatasaray in the Champions League eight years ago. But just what? I'm not sure who against, but at some point in 2023, that guy Wells is scoring three in one match. Revisit this in here. I would look like I got brains bigger than a pie. I'm not really sure where this weird faith in Danny Welbeck to score a hat-trick came from. A hat-trick in 2023. To be fair, yeah, I know he only scored seven goals since this prediction, but Ryzen beat Wolves 6-0 in March. He scored twice and was then hauled off the pitch by Roberto De Zerbi after just 56 minutes. Why, Bobby? Why? Wolves were in free fall. Julian Lopetegui looked embarrassed to be associated with this clown shop defending. If you had just left Welbeck on the pitch, he would probably have got his first hat-trick in nearly 10 gears. When Welbeck's number went up on the board, he must have felt like kicking the Zerbi in the chin. Bro, Brighton did see one of their strikers get a treble this year. Evan Ferguson against Newcastle in September, which is only the second Premier League hat-trick this club has ever scored, and the first one at the Amex Stadium. So it's not a completely awful prediction. I mean, I just got the wrong striker. Chelsea, will sack Graham Potter? Well... Th th this is obvious. Potter will absolutely be out the door by September. This is going to be an ugly year in the job for the guy. He's going to be a Stamford Bridge disaster. This will ruin his career. Trust me. If Potter is still in the Chelsea job this time next year, I will not only take a bath in milk this time. Oh, no. Let's make it a swimming pool filled with milk. Just you watch. Yeah. I was right about Graham Potter failing at Chelsea. Oh, what a shock. Lads, this one might have looked obvious. But he was really only a couple of months into his spell at Stamford Bridge when this prediction came out. And we saw how long Man United persisted with a clearly incompetent buffoon like Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. So this couldn't be more of the same. But no, the fact Potter is long gone, I'm pretty pleased with this one. That's two right so far. And we're still not out of the seas. Crystal Palace, Zaha will not score another goal. So yeah, he'll get himself a shock January transfer deadline day move for about 16 million quid to, I don't know, Roma? Honestly, that Zaha is never scoring another goal for Crystal Palace. Ever. I said Wilfred Zaha would not score another goal for Crystal Palace because he was going to quit Salas Park at the end of the season to go and play for Roma. No, it was Galatasaray instead. But um, this one was so nearly perfect. I made this video in December. Yeah, Zaha only scored one more goal for Palace in the entire second half of the season. In late April, in his second last home match for the club, he nets one against West Ham. I mean, he just had to score against the Hammers, didn't he? Oh, who is he trying to impress? Moisey's daughter sitting in the crowd? But that was it. When I made this outlandish, stupid prediction, the truth is, is that Zaha only had one more Crystal Palace goal in him. It's not completely horrible, right? Everton will lose a game 8-0. This is going to be sad to watch. Everton are the perfect unsuspecting, moldy dead club who will. They will lose 8-0 this year and they get relegated in 2026. I'm not sure why I was so convinced that everyone would be slapped 8-0. I think I just saw a sleepy dead club who, I mean, when these sort of teams stagnate long enough, they will wind up with a horrible, embarrassing defeat in the Premier League. Like Aston Villa, Sunderland, Southampton, Watford in the past. But no, they quickly hire Sean Dyche after this video, who just does not lose games 8-0. I mean, he'll eat a worm sandwich for lunch, sure. But he won't be losing by eight. If Frank Lampard is still been at the wheel, then maybe. But no, their heaviest losses in 2023 were just 4 0 against Arsenal and Aston Villa. Not even close to 8 0. One of the worst predictions in the list. Fulham will win at the Eddie Hags. Every season, a surprise team wins at the Eddie Hags. I reckon they'll nick a famous win. I thought Fulham would win at the Eddie Hags. They instead lost 5 1 at Man City, where Erling Haaland scored a hat trick. One of the worst predictions in the list. Although, to be fair, it is a bit unlucky because City only had five shots on target. It's just they, um, they all went in. Leeds will reach Epic Cup final. This seems nutty. Me actually predicting Leeds to do something good? The guy will force me to get a weedy violinist tattooed on my foot? Here's the thing though. I'm gonna look like a genius in May. I have a feeling that Leeds, oh, they're going to Wembley. Yeah, here was me thinking that Leeds United would be the great underdog story. Reaching the Epic Cup final in May 2023, and they went out in the fifth round, losing 2-0 at Fulham. There was no underdog Epic Cup final. It was just the Manchester Derby, where David De Gea spelled his fate by keeping a solid clean sheet 
for less than 30 seconds. Sorry, Leeds. Leicester, Brendan Rodgers will take international job. Yes, Rodgers will quit Leicester by mutual consent to take an international management job. And it'll be something like agreeing to coach Wales after Rob Page gets the sack. Or if not Wales, then something even weirder like maybe Sweden or Denmark. Trust me, Rodgers will coach at Euro 2024. No, Brendan Rodgers will not manage Euro 2024. I was so convinced that he quit Leicester and go into international management for one of Wales, Sweden or Denmark. Absolutely not. He got the lesser sack and just went back to Celtic instead. So don't get me wrong. I would probably agree to drink dog vomit through a straw if it meant he would take the Republic of Ireland job. But no, this is just a wildly wrong prediction too. Oh, these are getting worse and worse the deeper you go into the vid. Liverpool will not sign Jude Bellingham. Liverpool fans are convinced they're signing Jude Bellingham, right? I'm going to say this. I don't think you'll buy him. No, this transfer, it's too huge. It's too monstrous. It'll be Real Madrid signing Bellingham next summer. I'm sorry. For the same reason you didn't buy Erling and Chalmany from Monaco, this is a similar transfer, same result. Bellingham, he's going to Madrid. Ozzy, if he winds up at Anfield in 2023, I'll get his face tattooed on my hand. Perfect! This was a perfect prediction! That a year ago, Liverpool fans were convinced that they were signing Jude Bellingham. Nope, absolutely not. He did wind up at Real Madrid, and not only that, but... I can feel the ice cream dripping onto my hand. Ah! But lads, he has got 16 goals in 18 games. He has scored more goals in La Liga than any other player. And he is literally hunting the golden boot, which is bonkers beyond belief. Three years ago, he was just a kid in Birmingham's midfield. But get in, this is actually a quality prediction. You were all convinced. Look at the top comment. If Jude Bellingham winds up at Anfield, I'll get him tattooed on my hand. Famous last words, this guy will have more tattoos than Beckham at his rate. Get ready to have Bellingham's face on your hand. Um, nope. Look how clean it is. Actually, that looks kind of dirty. Uh, we don't have much toilet paper in this house. Look, I think Bellingham would have been happy to go to Anfield. And he would 100% be involved in the Premier League title race now. Well, come on, this guy is setting records at the biggest club in the world. The impact he's having at Real Madrid, this is absolutely. Tell your great grandkids about it territory. He could literally write a best-selling book based on how he's absolutely smashed his first 20 games at the Bernabeu. So yeah, he's absolutely made the right choice. And I was right! Man City, Haaland will go seven games without a goal. I mean, this is unheard of, right? To say that Erling Haaland will go seven games without a goal, you all think I'm insane, but I'm sorry. Isn't he due a drought? Just trust me, just watch. Seven games without a goal, it's happening. This was a weird prediction. The greatest goal machine in world football. And I was thinking him to go seven whole games without a goal. And he winds up winning the treble, finishing his debut season at City with over 50 goals, and finishing second in the Ballon d'Or. But no, I was still right. I know, I'm shocked too. He did go seven consecutive matches for Man City without a goal. After netting at Goodison Park in mid-May, he was done. He then failed to score against Chelsea and Brighton in the league, didn't score against Real Madrid in the Champions League semi-final second leg, or the final against Inter Milan, zero goals in the FA Cup final either, and finally no goals in the UEFA Super Cup against Sevilla, or a Community Shield against Arsenal. To count them up, that is seven games without a goal. I exactly. Seven, exactly. Before, yeah, scoring two on the Premier League opening day against Burnley. But for some wacky reason, I actually got this one right. Man United will sack another player. I just say I don't sack players regularly. Sure, I mean, they just sacked Cristiano Ronaldo. But I mean, the last one was Roy Keane 17 years ago. But as we're about to watch this club sack two high-profile stars in two consecutive years, I promise you, I just have a funny feeling. But I promise you, one Manchester United megastar is getting sacked in 2023. And if they don't, I will do an entire video buried up to my neck at a local beach. Oh, this is annoying. I was close. I'll be honest. I thought the Manchester United were going to sack a certain specific player who is instead on loan in Spain. But the club are actually in another Cristiano Ronaldo situation. Jadon Sancho, somebody three years ago, had the same hype Jude Bellingham as now. He has been completely frozen out of the squad because he won't say sorry for a tweet. He has been banished from the club has been left out of 21 matchday squads and counting. He is just one Piers Morgan interview away from being sacked. Lads, I know he's currently linked with a loan to Juventus, but there is nearly three weeks left of 2023, so I am going to hold off on my beach forfeit until January because there is still a chance. Come on, Piers! Please just tempt Sancho onto your show. Offer him a bag of sweets and a free DVD of The Grinch to just come on and slag off Ten Hag because then then things might be untenable enough for the club to rip up his contract and finally sack Sancho.
Pancho. Come on, please. I'm so close to getting this one right. And there's still ice cream in my ear. Newcastle will win away game 10-0. Newcastle already have. Oh, they score a lot of goals. And especially away from home. Lads, this is Eddie Ball. Plays well as Bournemouth coach. This is a guy who traveled to Blackpool and won by six goals to one. And just two months earlier, he traveled to Birmingham City and won by eight. Yes, and eight nil win. And at some point in 2023, Newcastle will click. And being roared on by a crazy away support, they are going to viciously annihilate a team on the break. Someone will get sent off. And honestly, lads, Newcastle will run right. I'm calling it 10 nil. 10 nil. It's coming. Just you watch. This is horrible. This could have been the greatest prediction I have ever done uh, of all time. Everything I said was true. Newcastle did absolutely destroy someone away from home. Sheffield United. But it was 8-0, not 10. Lads, in that video, I even referenced Eddie Howe getting Bournemouth to beat Birmingham 8-0 in the past. Why didn't I just stick with that scoreline? 2023 was the year of Newcastle's record away win in their huge history. So... I kind of got it right. It's just my brain is clearly foggier than a misty mountain in the hills of Madagascar. Lads, did any of you predict Newcastle to win a Premier League match? Away from home with more than eight goals this year? No, you probably thought there was more chance of anyhow. Agreeing to play the role of an Oompa Loompa in the latest Willy Wonka film? I was so close to an utterly genius prediction. And you know what the annoying thing is? Bruno Gamari stalked Newcastle 7-0 off at Bramall Lane in September and there was over 20 minutes left of the match. Why did the magpies slow down? If they just kept going at that relentless pace instead of taking pity on Paul Hicking Bob, and emptying their bench, they could absolutely have scored 10. But still, I'm I'm kind of proud of this wrong prediction. It's the best wrong prediction I've ever done. Nottingham Forest will hire Sean Dyche. This is obvious, right? It doesn't matter whether or not they do stay up. Whatever division Nottingham Forest are in, if they start next season poorly, oh, poor old Steve Cooper might as well start clearing out his desk and applying for jobs at Burger King because he'll be gone. And that's the most obvious glaring choice is Sean Dyche. The man is out of work. He lives in the town. He attends Forest games. I mean, come on. How is he not already in charge? No, yeah. Join Everton instead. Southampton, Nathan Jones will still be here at Christmas. Southampton hates sacking people, so I promise you. Southampton could be 19th in the championship by next December. And Lance, Jones will still be in a job. Nope, absolutely not. Nathan Jones was sacked by Southampton in February. They replaced him with Ruben Salas, who after a Reading in Southampton, curling as Reading, joined bottom of League One. Down there with Cheltenham. How does he still have that job? Surely he is the worst manager of 2023. It's like he's on a mission to ruin Alan Pardew's former clubs. It's laughable how bad this young Spanish coach actually is. But yeah, as for Nathan Jones, his wacky interviews at Southampton have made him pretty untouchable. Although he is currently linked with the current Swansea City job. But ugh, that's pretty much it. Tottenham, Antonio Conte will quit. So yeah, in a world where managers no longer ever really resign, I think Conte is different and he will. In May. Yes, yes, yes. I said it. In a world where public managers very rarely quit, then I am pleased with this one. In late March, Antonio Conte left Tottenham by mutual consent after absolutely tearing his players to shreds after a weak 3-3 draw away at Southampton. He was clearly absolutely fed up with the Tottenham dressing room having the backbone of a banana pie. And yeah, he was out and hasn't actually worked since. I'm so sick of this ice cream melting on my head. West Ham will sack David Moyes. Lads, West Ham are having a sluggish season. I'm predicting that they're going to start next season badly too. The fans will get on top of Moyes. And yeah, I promise you, he's going to sack for Halloween. I said West Ham would sack David Moyes in 2023. Instead, 2023 is the year where this bloke has won the first trophy of his career and the first ever piece of European silverware in West Ham's history. It's mid-December and he's still very much in charge. He's in no real danger of losing his job at all, so what a horrible prediction this was. Wolves will sign a Champions League winner. But yeah, with Jorge Mendes putting the strings, I promise you, Wolves will sign someone this year who has won the Champions League in the past. If I had to pick one, then uh, either Pedro or James Rodriguez. This is annoying. Wolves... Did they sign a Champions League winner? Lads, even if they just tied up a deadline day panic move for Divock Origi, I would still have been proven right. Come on, this is a club who repeatedly tried to buy the Belgian beefcake striker from Liverpool two years ago. So they should have tried again last summer after selling pretty much every half-decent player with a pulse. I suppose they did sign Tommy Doyle alone from Man City, but he spent last season on loan at Sheffield United, whilst all his City buddies won the treble, so he doesn't count. I was, I went even closer than that. They signed Pablo Sarabia in January. He summoned and lost the Champions League final at PSG. They also signed Mario Lamina, who lost the Champions League final at Juventus. I was close. This is a club who signed two Champions League final losers. It's not that bad a suggestion, right? And you know what? To make myself feel even better, they signed Brazil wonder the fielder Jao Gomes from Flamengo, who had won the Copa Libertadores last year. You know... The South American Champions League? I mean, I watched that final this year when Fluminense won it, and you cannot imagine my crushing disappointment when I had to be told that the guy who scored the winner, John Kennedy, is not Irish at all. Then why is he called John Kennedy? Just call yourself Kennedinio. Stop getting my hopes up. But lads, I never actually clarified in that video which Champions League I meant. 
I didn't say Europe, so technically, Gomez has proven me right. Okay, six. I got six right. Okay, all right. If you think I'm cheating for the Wolves one, then fine. Okay, let's call it five. But some of the other predictions were pretty close. This isn't as terrible as I thought it would be. Let me know. Do you want me to do the same concept video for predict for predictions in 2024? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to click like, as always. I'll talk to you in a while.